Hey guys, it's Coach Caglione here, and today we want to give you an inside look on what goes on in Caglione's strength and what kind of the team training really looks like. Everything kind of starts off with some movement prep. You can see some of our athletes here. We're doing some kind of mobility work, if you will. The goal of some of these mobility and kind of stretching preparatory exercises is just to kind of get the joints moving. We want to kind of practice some of the positions that we're going to be in. So we got some kind of wider stand squatters, some sumo deadlifters in this particular group. So we're kind of warming up the hips, the ankles, the upper back, and also practicing some of the positions they're going to be in for the day. So that's kind of a good place to start in terms of a warm up. We aim to kind of work on some key areas as well as activate some certain muscles. And for many of our lifters on this particular day, uh, we're pretty far out from competing. So we're doing a little bit of a kind of a pre-exhaust uh, type warm up on this day. So we're getting some volume and some work in on the front end. So I'm kind of going over here a couple of different exercises. We're doing some exercises to kind of work uh, some of the muscles that will help assist in the squat and in the deadlift specifically. So we're kind of working some of the muscles of our hamstrings, our quadriceps and our abs in this particular case. So I'm going over just a couple of different drills and also giving some options to adjust the difficulty level for these particular movements. So some of these exercises will kind of serve as a warm to kind of help stretch uh, and kind of prepare certain areas, certain tissues. Uh, but again, also we're kind of utilizing these exercises as a means to get some volume and some work in on the front end. So you could see that we're doing some Romanian deadlifts or some back extensions here, as well as some abdominal exercises working kind of the muscles of the trunk. And we're doing some terminal knee extensions and some leg extensions to kind of work the quadriceps here. And the kind of groups are kind of going through and then some face pulls. The benefit of a face pull is great as well because it's also going to help stretch the pecs a little bit so you can kind of get in the positions a little bit better for uh, getting the bar on the back for like a low bar squat, for example. So we had two groups on this particular day. Steven and Ray are both getting ready to kind of do like a little bit of a tune-up meet in March. So they're utilizing a more specific variation on this particular day. And they're working up a little bit heavier. So utilizing a straight bar with some chains, the chains accommodate resistance to make it heavier at the top, lighter at the bottom, to teach the lifter to accelerate. And then we got Rachel here, who is new to, new to the gym, new to the team, and she's getting ready for the current US Open. And then the other group, uh, all these lifters, we got Jose and Sammy, John, in this particular group. Uh, they don't have a contest coming up, so they're utilizing the hook bar, which is basically just a cambered bar with some different hooks attached to it. That's going to kind of work the stability in the mid back a little bit and the benefit of the cambered bar. It's also going to alleviate some stress in the shoulder. So it's a nice kind of option when you're getting ready for an off season. And you can kind of see a variety of lifters uh, utilizing some different techniques and all at different levels. But one thing that you'll see is that there are some differences in the squat program that they're doing and some of the exercises that they're doing. Uh, Rachel's getting ready for her first meet in knee wraps. You can see I'm wrapping her knees here. That's going to help overload the bottom position. Uh, so it provides some resistance in terms of knee flexion. It makes it harder to bend the knees. So you're going to get some additional kind of power out of the bottom. The difference with knee wraps is that and anytime you add more powerlifting equipment, is that you need to be more controlled and your upper back needs to be tighter because even though you will be able to overload your body, you need to be able to control the equipment and be more precise. So here she is, uh, she's warming up here. She's working on her technique. This is one of her first sessions in wraps in this particular day. And she did a nice job of really handling the weight. So that was a pretty smooth 415 pounds for her. And Ray, Ray is also another example, really accomplished lifter, but he's just kind of getting, getting back into the swing of things. He actually has had some world-class squats to his belt. He's cut down to the 165 class. He's had a, as heavy as a 660-pound squat. So his best performance was third in the world. Rachel's got some all-time world records in the junior division. She's working on kind of climbing the ranks in the open class. She's a younger lifter, and uh, she's doing her first meet in the wraps, competing at the U.S. Open. Steven's a master's lifter, and he's uh, been had some layovers from the platform. He's getting ready to kind of compete again. 
but he's got some good experience under his belt. And this is kind of the heaviest that Ray has gone up to on this particular day. And it was smooth work for him. He's kind of working back up to also uh, putting knee wraps back on and getting ready for a kind of tune-up meet. You can see with the team training, everyone's kind of helping each other. Everyone's spotting. Everyone's kind of helping load and uh, working on. You can see here, I'm kind of working, I'm explaining to Rachel, or using uh, the box as more of a depth gauge on this particular day. Because sometimes when you add knee wraps, you add equipment, it can be harder to feel where you are on the bottom. You don't want to kind of collapse. You don't want to kind of plop. You want to make sure you're keeping tension and not just kind of using the wraps as a crutch. So you can see here that everyone's kind of helping each other got Angel working the monolift. The monolift's a great piece of equipment so you can adjust the height for, for the lifters. And it gives the lifter the option to not walk out the weight. They can stand up with the weight so they can work on their positioning a little bit better, which is extremely important, especially if you're a wraps lifter and an equipped lifter, to not have to kind of step backwards. So you can see Rachel's doing a great job. She's doing some volume at 480 pounds, doing a good job of keeping her position. And one of the things that we're working on with her, and even though she's very advanced in terms of her strength, she's still new to knee wraps, so she is learning and she's still working on the technique, working on her foot pressure, working on driving out of the hole, utilizing those wraps. As you can see, Steven's also getting back in wraps as well, so this was his, uh, I believe this is his, uh, one of his top sets of the day. Doing a good job of keeping his, his tension. He's working on kind of controlling the bottom. He's also lost some weight as well. So sometimes when you lose weight, you, you go down a weight class, uh, your leverages can change and your technique might need to change, your stability and your strengths and weaknesses may change as a result. So you can see Ray is doing a great job Coach Mary Fleckenstein's on the side. She's an accomplished lifter as well. One of our assistant coaches at Gaglion Strength. It's always nice to have uh, a coach that kind of walks the walk and kind of understands what the lifter's going through. That's one of the things that we kind of pride ourselves on at Gaglion Strength. Yeah, King Jose is one of his first uh, sessions back with the team. Jose was a silver medalist in the 181 class to Arnold. He's a squatted and deadlifted over 600 pounds over triple body weight to his credit. He's worked very hard for that goal. And I would say Jose is a great example of what's possible with the team. He's kind of worked it with the team for several years. It took him about three years to qualify for the Arnold and get his first elite total. But it kind of shows you, you know, you can see, you know, Jose gets a lot out of his body and uh, it kind of shows you what kind of work ethic can do. And if you put in the time and, and energy, you could achieve some great things. And he's really kind of holding in his technique to work to his strengths and work to his body. And you can see Sammy Chi giving a fist bump there. So this was uh, one of Rachel's first deadlift sessions with us. And you can see she's got a pretty interesting technique. Super pretty upright, does a good job of keeping her hips open. But you can see as she starts to warm up here, one of the things we're working on kind of making her block out a little bit more efficient, a little bit smoother, where she's kind of extending her knees, get working the timing of when she locks out her knees and her hips as she locks out the weight. And we're also working on having her dead stop her reps a little bit better. So you can see here, this is 500 pound deadlift, which is very rare to see a female do. It's becoming a little bit more common, but it's still, you know, more common on Instagram, not as common in person to see. Working on the timing of the lockout, controlling the lockout a little bit better is something that's going to be uh, something that she'll work on. And again, it's a good example. Just because someone's advanced in strength doesn't mean that they can't work on the technique, doesn't mean they can't work on uh, working a better competition standard and work on being more efficient. She was also pretty fatigued after squatting knee wraps. So you can see here, she's doing more of a, a tap and go style. And then we've been working on having her dead stop her reps later in training. But that was a good set for her. That was one of her best sets of the day. And you can see I'm just kind of giving her some pointers. One of the things I kind of was, you know, 
alluding to is, you know, having her lockout, her knees and her hips, and adjusting her timing a little bit to help aid in the lockout, making her a little bit more efficient. So that's one of the things that we're going to be utilizing, you know, at Gaglione Strength. The team training is a good combination of the energy and the support of the team, but also you're getting kind of that personalized attention that you would from a personal trainer. So you kind of get the best of both worlds with the team training. You get the high energy of the group, the support and the spotting, the safety of a group training when you're lifting heavier, as well as as well as that kind of one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, that's going to be individualized to your particular needs. So Rachel's starting to get a little fatigued on this day, so we're starting to add straps. Straps can be a good tool uh, to help kind of save your hands and get some additional volume, especially when you're going heavier and doing some heavier repetitions. You can notice that she's still working on setting up the same way, and you can tell she's getting a little bit more fatigued here but did a better job of holding the lockouts, especially if you're using straps, it's good to get in the habit of just holding your lockouts a little bit longer so your hips can get a little bit more work. And again, a 535 pound deadlift is, uh, is an insane lift uh, for any man or woman in any weight class. And especially to see a female kind of do that for repetition is really impressive. So again, we're just kind of give, coaching her up here and we're kind of, I'm kind of, kind of going over some cues in terms of again the timing. Uh, when you're that heavy, you don't have as much time to think, and you have to kind of drill those positions so it becomes more second nature. And I was kind of explaining in some different strategies that she could do uh, moving forward in the training cycle. So, because we want to make sure that it's not just about lifting the weight at a powerlifting meet, you have to lift the weight to a certain standard. So figuring out strategies to kind of help the lifter kind of show the judges know that that they know what they're doing and so we can get more white lights which would give them a good lift in competition as well as things that are going to help kind of minimize joint stress and it give the lifter some more longevity so you can see here it's definitely getting a little tired but she was able to kind of muster up Another said, it did a lot of work on this particular day. So that's kind of uh, the gist of kind of what the team training is all about. If you guys want to check out some future content, please subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, please share it with a friend. Check out the links in the description if you want to support our program or if you want to give us, give us a go. Into, we have remote coaching and in-person training options at this time. Thanks again for watching, guys. Until next time, stay strong, and we'll see you soon.